It's rare you see a film with a convoluted, unfunny start that somehow turns itself around and leaves you giggling and pleasantly surprised by the end. It's also rare that you sit next to someone in a theater who decides to take off not only their shoes, but their socks as well, leaving the entire theater smelling like a wet rag. But somehow, I got to experience both with Bullet Train. That's a very real thing I experienced last night. This guy was just raw dogging his feet in that theater, and boy, did they smell terrible. Anyway, Bullet Train is the new summer action comedy starring Brad Pitt, Taylor, uh, uh, what the fuck? I almost just said Anya Taylor-Joy, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, Brian Tyree Henry, and a lot of other big name actors. Before we go any further, I just wanna say I will be discussing spoilers later in the video, but I will let you know when that's about to happen. The film is an adaptation of the 2010 Japanese novel, Maria Beetle. I know absolutely nothing about the book, so I can't comment on how it is as an adaptation, but what I can say is that the star-studded cast and who done it vibes that I was getting made me think it was going to be similar to Murder on the Orient Express, which I really enjoyed. And based on the early ratings and reviews on Letterboxd, it seems to be receiving a pretty similar mixed sentiment from viewers as well. But unfortunately, up until the third act of the movie, which was absolutely bonkers and insane, I was just left kind of disappointed wanting more. I was wanting to giggle and all I really got was a hard exhale through my nose once in a while. I just wanted to be like... <laughs> <laughs> but instead I was like, <laughs> look, Bullet Train is a mess. There's moments near the end that I will happily rewatch once it's out on streaming, but I'll probably skip through 75% of the movie to watch the parts that I actually want to rewatch. I really enjoyed the colorful set pieces, the goofy action, and Ladybug's stoic and loving one-liners. Brad Pitt is having a great time in this role, and you can really feel it. One thing that I thought was really cool about this movie is that Brad Pitt's character Ladybug, who's basically an ex-assassin that gets brought back in for one more mission. From the get-go, that character is approached in a totally different way than ex-con mans or ex-assassins in other movies, because oftentimes the con man or assassin or whatever, they get brought back in kind of against their will, and they wanted to get out of the game or that industry because it ruined their life or their family or whatever. But Ladybug's approach and demeanor is totally different. It's a lot more lighthearted. They're very into self-development. They're optimistic. He has a lot of stoic tendencies and he's basically just committed to bettering himself. And I just thought playing on that idea was so funny throughout the movie. For an action film called Bullet Train, I did expect there would be more bullets involved, but when you watch it, you'll notice there's kind of a cool reason as to why there's not a lot of guns. And as a result, it's just a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat, which most of the time is pretty awesome and engaging. But along with the good, comes quite a bit of not so good. It has a very jumbled story, boring jokes, long exposition dumps, heavy handed themes, and too many Thomas the Tank Engine references. I don't understand why there was such an emphasis on Thomas the fucking Tank Engine. I don't even know, is that different than Thomas the Train? I think they might've touched on that, like Thomas the Train, and then he's like, nah, it's a tank engine or some shit. I don't get it. Well, I get it. It just, it didn't work for me at all. And for the first two thirds of this movie, there are so many bits that don't work comedically, in my opinion, at least. And they just don't stop. They just keep going, hammering it into your head. This is a minor spoiler, I guess. So you can skip like 10 seconds if you want. But there's this one bit where these two guys are going back and forth debating their like assassin names, which are Tangerine and Lemon. And they're debating like whether or not that's cool. And it just doesn't fucking stop. Like no one in the the theater was laughing and they literally cut away to a different scene and then they cut back and they're still talking about their names being fruits like oh like the fruit your name is lemon like the fruit and it just I don't know, it was kind of obnoxious. But the beautiful thing about comedy and humor is that everybody has a different sense of humor. So if you find it really funny, that's great. For me, it wasn't funny until the last like 45 minutes. I mentioned that the film has some long exposition dumps and oftentimes that's because there's so many new characters all the time that they're trying to fill in the backstory for. And for me personally, it just was way too cluttered and confusing. Like who is this person? Why are we learning about this flashback from this dude that I barely know? 
know? And how does that tie back in to the lead at all? And I understand that with these mystery whodunit action movies, they don't need to tell us all the details. Part of the fun is as a viewer, you kind of have to do a little work and decipher like, is this a good guy or a bad guy? But at a certain point for me, I didn't even know who these new characters are or why they're there at all. And for me, it was just too much a lot of the time. And these exposition dumps just set off an alarm in my brain where it's like exposition, exposition, exposition. And it's hard for me to even register why I should care about this character at all. I don't know if other people felt that way, but that's how it was for me, at least. Now, part of this is just personal preference. For example, I've tried to watch Game of Thrones three times and there's just too many moving pieces. Like, I'm sure I could comprehend it and understand it and probably enjoy it. But for me, it's just too much. Like, I'm not even interested when it's so grand and you're trying to connect so many stories. Like I said in my last video, I love movies where it's like one to three characters. Maybe they don't even talk a whole lot and you just really get to understand and follow a few people. But when there's so much thrown at you, it's like my brain kind of turns off in some way. I'll dive into some more detail with these random characters later in the spoiler section because I have a bit to say. I've seen some people calling this movie self-aware, but to me, there was quite a few moments that didn't feel self-aware at all. And I don't know if my humor just isn't the same as theirs, but there were multiple cringy edgelord one-liners that to me just like took me out of it, but I couldn't tell if that was the self-awareness or just like not that good of writing. But I wrote down a few of them. Shit balls, ass cheeks, and fuck nuts. Now, the last time I've heard those used kinda ever was in middle school when people like didn't really wanna swear for real. So they'd be like, oh, poop balls. I don't know, there was just a lot of like, oh, what the fuck? This is fucking fucked, man. That's not to say I didn't laugh at all. Like I said earlier in the third act, I thought it was quite funny and I had a really good time. But leading up to that, there was so much buildup that was just kind of exhausting. But there was still here and there some moments where I was like, okay, that's pretty good. I also keep reading people saying that Aaron Taylor Johnson and Brian Tyree Henry stole the show. And I honestly don't really agree with that. I think Brad Pitt stole the show, but he didn't steal it from anyone because he's the main character. Brian Tyree Henry was definitely funny at times, but overall I found the brother dynamic between those two more annoying than endearing. The comedic bits went on way too long and for me didn't really land. However, the bits with them and Brad Pitt together were fantastic. This is such a weird movie for me to talk about because the first half of the movie, I didn't really enjoy it much at all, but then the last 40 minutes of it, I had an amazing time and I thought it was hilarious and it really went off the rails, balls to the wall with the goofiness, the action, the comedy. The entire film up to the last act is all set up. It's just all building up and somehow magically beyond all rationality, there was actually a payoff for every single setup. Like all of these convoluted storylines that I didn't understand how they were gonna tie together, they just did and it kinda worked. It took a lot of exposition to get there, but you really do get rewarded as a viewer with all the goofiness of all these different storylines. They like actually kind of connect and I was just baffled. Overall, I had a good time at the movies. I like to support films like this that are not part of an existing franchise. They're not a big superhero thing. They're just their own contained original blockbuster. Like that's cool. Now let's move on to some spoilers. For those of you who have seen the movie, I would love to hear from you in the comments on if you have any feedback on these questions or concerns. The first one being, after watching the entire movie, I still don't understand why the prince, who was that evil girl, I don't get why she pushed the kid off the roof in the first place. Like that storyline just seemed really confusing. Like why was he pushed off the roof? And maybe they explained it, but I was so overwhelmed with all the different backstories that I might have just missed it. The whole time I was watching, I thought the prince had something to do with the stolen snake and the snake venom storyline that was thrown in there. But then out of nowhere, an hour and a half into the movie, a totally different character who we had never met just shows up and is this assassin who uses snake venom to like kill people. And apparently that person was a threat to the white death, who's the main villain. And I was like, what the fuck? Like why and where? and 
what? And then that character died very soon after. And then there was just a snake lurking around for no reason. Like that storyline had been closed. Editor John here, I should clarify. I fully understand that the prince pushed the kid because she wanted to get closer to his dad, who basically had access to the White Death and had the ability to kill him because he worked for someone that worked for the White Death, I think. But I guess I don't really understand if that's the full story there or if the snake had anything to do with her as well, or if that was something else entirely. Also, near the third act of the movie, Kimura, who's another character that I haven't really talked about in this video, but his dad just shows back up out of nowhere onto this train and his name is the elder and he knows exactly what's going to happen because of fate. And there's a really heavy handed theme of fate throughout the entire movie. They probably say fate like seven or eight times, but yeah, so suddenly this guy is back and now we know him as the elder apparently. And then it gives a flashback backstory of him being there when the white death took over and basically started his reign. And that was just like a whole nother twist that I didn't expect, but it also didn't really work. Like I just got more confused and I was like, why is this guy back out of nowhere? And then because of fate, he just knows what's going to happen. And then in the last 20 to 30 minutes of the movie, we learn that the reason there were all these different assassins and dangerous people on this train together and why there's basically nobody else on this train is because the White Death is threatened by all these different people in different ways and they could all kill him. And so he puts them all on the train together hoping that they will just basically kill each other, which they kind of do. The White Death said that he bought all the other tickets on the train so that they would basically fight it out and just like kill each other because they were all threats to him. But I... I uh, what? I also didn't fully follow that part either, so maybe I'm missing something, but I guess he knew that they all could kill him or wanted to kill him or something and so he just was like yeah i'll do this ruse where i buy all the tickets and put them on a train but then in the end the white death boards the train and fights with them anyway so i don't know i also kept asking myself why is his handler who's basically the lady he keeps communicating with on the phone that's giving him his mission updates why is she such a big part of this movie and then at the end she shows up to save him and it's sandra bullock and he's like kind of falling in love with her or something and i was like why is this even a storyline like i don't get it but okay all right that's the end of the spoilers overall i had a fun time thank god the last 30 minutes were actually really good and really funny. It just feels like they pulled out all the stops and just threw everything at the wall and a lot of it stuck. There was a lot of people laughing. I thought the big action thing with the train near the end, which I'm not going to spoil, but I thought that was super fun and cool. And there's this scene that's kind of a post credit, but it's more like a mid credit scene because it's right after the credits start to roll that I just thought was hilarious. <laughs> people laughed a lot at the very last scene before the credits. So overall, I had a good time. I think I highly recommend going and watching this with your friends. It could potentially be fun if other substances were involved. Not that I condone that and I'm not gonna say which substances, but I recommend seeing this movie support original, creative, fun screenplays like this. And let me know what you thought of the movie. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed. It feels really good to be creative again, finally regularly uploading videos. I already have my next week's video scheduled, ready to go. And I'm just trying to have a healthy combo of new movie content that people are searching for and talking about, as well as more indie film stuff that I'm really passionate about that I can somehow make trendy and fun and engaging. So subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.